Yo, what up? Um, Lasana Ace Hair is here. And I'm Carvello. Uh, yeah, we produced the record 116 uh, Live Forever. It was featuring Wande, Triple E, 1K Few, Aaron Cole, Tommy Royale, Hovi, and Tadashi. Yeah, let's take you behind the beat, how every sound came together, and uh, how we managed to put, I think, seven people on a song and kept it under five minutes. Yeah, we did that. It's all good. Check it out. It's just really fun to like have a song that's like a lot of people. It's a compilation type of song, so it almost forces your producer chops to be stretched so you can kind of make the song as like impactful and dynamic as possible and still maintain some creative integrity. So the first sound that we uh, started with was this vocal sample. Um, I know you probably heard this a million times, but I'm a sucker for vocal samples and sampling myself. I think, I think, um, I feel like our voices are instruments and we can use them. So essentially, um, the first sound we added was this literally me and my uh, Apple iPhone voice note, no voice note uh, recorder, and basically humming this. <laughs> This is it, dry without effects. <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of mutated gibberish. <laughs> um, and how to explain how I arrived at that sound, I just, it just comes out of me. Maybe I'm a big fan of Timbaland, so I'm always like intrigued by producers who can take their voice, alter it, manipulate it. Next sound we added was a flute. So it's kind of like, kind of carries the beat. So when you hear the flute and the vocal sample together, you have this little sound. <laughs> Obviously the record um, has some other vocal stuff in it. So um, there is a sample in it. Shout out to my boy, Jimmy Cravity, super dope singer songwriter and I've been knowing him for a long time, and he had this hook that he I always thought was amazing, um, and it's just super dope, and I've always wanted to kind of sample it. So as we made the beat, um, Wande had this idea for the hook, and me and her kind of wrote the hook together, and um, as, as the beat was made, I was like, yo, would it be cool if we sampled this song that my boy Jimmy Cravity made that kind of has a lyric that complements the hook? So. This is the record right here. It's called Stadium. And uh, yeah, check it out. Take me to the stadium. I'm gonna play my heart out there. I'm gonna play it everywhere. Oh, I may be down, but I will rise. I'll take my feet and kiss the sky. Cause I'm gonna live forever. So obviously you hear that live forever tag. So once we had the hook going, we are gonna live forever. I was like, yeah, it'd be so dope if I do pull this hook um, from the song that's not released. You kind of hear this right here. Take me to the stage. We took that vocal sample and we kind of put it together and flipped it into this. Take me to the stage the ship. Take me to the stage the ship. Take me to the stage the ship. Add some effects on it, give it some processing, kind of give it some vibes. So when you put that sound together and the vocal sample that I did and the flute, this is kind of like the vibe that you got. I, I keep a library of stabs and like cool stuff that just to add punch and energy. So this stab was under the beat as well. And then the next thing we added was the 808s. So you had the drums together. This actually wasn't the original snare or clap to the beat. So most of the artists on the song wrote to the beat with the original clap, which is super whack. I felt instinctively dr driven to change it because I felt like that clap was so weak. Shout out to the artists for writing to that whack clap and doing your verses and putting up with that clap because this side snare was just, it was everything. It's just kind of like, mm -hmm. 
even uh, I think Andy Mino was like on the group text was like, yeah, shout out that snare. So I felt really proud. <laughs> even though he tried to get his verse in on time, but just just couldn't. That's pretty much the basis of, of the bulk of the beat. Um, I'll talk about the bridge part a little bit, but on Hobie's part, it was really cool because uh, Carvello added a dope switch up that kind of just gave it a whole different vibe. Yeah, so for the uh, switch up section, uh, I think I think it was probably necessary to do some like something different since you know the song is a little bit longer with all the people that are on there, all the features that are on there. Basically, Ace told me, you know, kind of just take out the drums and and do your own drums with all the features. We wanted to uh, you know have something new, fresh yeah. come in, you know, later in the song, so, so it's not just kind of a loop the whole way through. I kind of usually start with the 808. And then once I got that like kind of 808 melody uh, down, I mean it's pretty straightforward from there. I added the uh, collapse and snare. And then obviously hi-hats. On top of the drums, Ace put on some some dope soundscapes to kind of to give it that new feel too. Yeah, so. I mean, it was just a dope switch up. Yeah. Carvello, it just I think it's dope to. I love when producers like share the spotlight or like when that during that part of the song is like the production palette switched up. Mm -hmm. Even though it was quick, it was almost it was like it was a dope infusion of your style, which I think is fire. So we added this cool little um, music. It's called the Tron flute. Uh, pad on top of what he did to kind of gave it some vibe. So to hear it solo, it's kind of like this right here. Also, I forgot there was the keys on this section too. So it was. I like mashing up like hard track production with like beautiful musicality. So anyway, um, I played the, the Jimmy Cravity sample stadium that we that we inserted in the beat, but I also had someone replay the actual sample and write something different to it. So I basically sampled the replay of the sample. Shout out to A. Parker, amazing uh, singer-songwriter, guitarist, guitar player. Even though the road is long and cold, I've got a fire that burns inside. I plan to have used that whole section for the outro, but as I was doing it, it just wasn't sitting right. I didn't really use his, his lyrics, but I figured that his guitar playing was so special and like this song just ended like on a really cool high note. So I'll play the part coming out of Tadashi's verse of the, the production palette of that. <laughs> I had that part, I was like, yo, it'd be really cool if one day sung her like wavy, super catchy hook over the guitar part to make this like contrast. And then I was I was going crazy, I know, I was, I was doing too much. So I basically took a bunch of drum loops that I have in my library, just started freaking it. And uh, with a bunch of like distortion and cool sounds and textures that I can't reveal all the sauce because I feel like some things are left to be a mystery. But this is kind of what we had on top of that guitar part that kind of gave it like a bop. On top of that, we added the bass. So you put everything 
together and this is the basis of the Live Forever Bridge, the fade out part. And in a nutshell, I try to make that as quick as we could because there's a lot of sounds. There's a lot of artists on this record. It's obviously one of those kind of records that it's a challenge production wise to kind of condense it and make it enjoyable. I thought all the artists smashed on it and I felt like I had a lot of fun while I'm doing this track. So I hope y'all dig it too. Yeah.